A question I'm asked a lot, am I ready for a web developer job? I think what is often meant by this question is, should I start applying for roles or I've applied to hundreds of roles but have been unsuccessful? In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think you need to have done before applying for roles that will ultimately land you a job. I'm assuming a couple of things. You know how to code, whether you learned at a college, a boot camp, or self taught. You know enough to have already built some projects. But what additional things do you also need to have before applying? A LinkedIn profile is a must have. Recruiters and HR teams use LinkedIn almost exclusively. If you're not on LinkedIn, you're invisible to a large part of the job market. This is your number one way to get noticed by people hiring. Your LinkedIn profile is a great way to showcase your portfolio of projects. It's free, easy to set up, and gives you visibility to those recruiters and HR managers that exclusively use the platform to find new talent. But you must optimize your profile to be effective. Your profile photo must be a professional looking headshot, a cropped wedding photo, a night at the bar with your friends, or a vacation shot are all bad choices. Think corporate ID badge, not Instagram influencer. The LinkedIn headline is probably the most under-optimized part of most LinkedIn profiles. It's used heavily in search data. So you need to make sure it contains the correct keywords so your profile will appear in search results. Often, you'll see job titles like junior developer or aspiring web developer, and this is the wrong approach. Your headline should contain the technologies you use as a developer, things like ASP.NET, SQL, JavaScript, c -sharp. Recruiters and HR teams are searching for skills, not job titles. We do have a free course over at learn.coderfriday.com that covers all of the things you should and should not do with your LinkedIn profile to maximize your chances of getting noticed. You need a portfolio of business projects that showcase your skills. This is especially important early on in your career. Not just any portfolio will do. It can't be poorly designed, full of toy apps, broken links, or typos. Your portfolio should be a showcase of work and be filled with business-oriented projects that solve recognizable problems. It should also align with the stack you're applying for. A set of Java projects will not show as strong when applying for a C-sharp job. Make sure your stack aligns. What do I think makes a good business app? At Coder Foundry, we teach people to build a couple of apps that we think are perfect for portfolios. First, a bug tracker. It's a full stack, full featured business application that solves a problem every dev manager has. We know it shows well during an interview and it allows you to easily demonstrate knowledge and skill. If you want to know more about the bug tracker application, you can watch our one coding project video here. It'll give you all the insight as to why it's the perfect portfolio application. Second, a blog. Again, it's a full stack application that is easily understood by the viewer. It also allows you to showcase your technical knowledge by writing articles about software development. While your LinkedIn profile and portfolio are used to get you noticed and get you invited to an interview, you still have to win that interview. Inevitably, you're going to be asked technical questions at your interview. The best way to prepare for this scenario is to practice, practice, practice. Google the top 20 questions in your stack. Know the academic answer to each and a demonstrable answer. And by that I mean, can you turn that question into a demonstration of your code? The quicker you demo, the quicker you will get hired. Here's a framework you can use to practice answering any technical question. I call this the answer, refer, showcase framework. Answer the question with an academic answer. Refer to an example of that answer in the code of one of your projects showcase that answer in a running piece of software. If during the interview you are asked a question that you cannot answer, it's okay. But you now have a follow-up opportunity to use the answer refer showcase framework and email the interviewer with your answer, code example, and a link to your project. I've seen this work and it can create an employment offer. Students using this technique have turned an interview failure into a success. Along with being asked questions in an interview, you're also going to be asked to prove your coding skills. This is usually in the form of a coding project or a small application. 
I have seen three broad types of projects. The landing page. You're given an image or a wireframe and asked to recreate that page. This is usually HTML and CSS or sometimes a CSS framework like Bootstrap or Tailwind. It could also contain some simple JavaScript. The API. You need to be able to consume an API and display the data in an application. An example would be something like the Blazor movie application we build here at Coder Foundry that uses the TMDB API to build a movie showcase application. The full stack application, often referred to as a CRUD app, something that is attached to a database backend. A recipe book or an address book are common types that our students have been asked to build. You should be comfortable with building all three types of applications, the landing page, the API, and the full stack. Often people will tell you that you only need to study data structures and algorithms, or DSA, in order to get a software job. While we think it's important, it's less important than having a good portfolio of projects and being able to prove you can code. But you still need to be prepared to answer some DSA questions. I think you should focus your learning time on array and logic questions. For an array question specifically, know how to reverse, split, join, find, merge, and remove duplicate items from an array. Logic questions involve if then else and conditionals. These can be seen in questions like FizzBuzz, clock hands, and palindrome. If you can answer a variety of questions about those topics, you will find they're very often asked during interviews. If you want to practice some common DSA JavaScript-based questions, we have a free course at learn.coderfoundry.com. The link is in the description. If you have an optimized LinkedIn profile, a portfolio of business applications, or well-practiced in answering technical questions, can produce small projects on demand and answer some basic DSA questions, then you're ready for a career in development. If you're missing any of these skills, it's likely you still have some work to do. We, of course, would love to be your teacher, your coach, or mentor here at Coder Foundry and can teach you all of these skills. But you can learn these things on your own too. Keep at it. Good luck and keep coding.